The kiln drying process breaks down into the following steps. We were taken to see the kiln where these humongous pallets of, I believe they're 17 inch long, one inch squares. About this long and about like that, but they're squared. And uh, the room was quite enormous. The squares of wood are, are stacked specifically for the drying process. This particular stacking methodology leaves small gaps in between each piece and each layer of wood. This provides clear paths around each stick so the air can pass through all the pallets and dry each piece evenly. In the kiln there are rows of fans that uh, consistently make the air flow evenly through the, the stacks of wood. Heating coils control the temperature of the air and steam is injected to control the humidity. The temperature and humidity are adjusted so that the moisture content of the air is lower than the moisture content of the wood in the kiln. As the air passes through the stacks of wood, moisture migrates out of the wood into the air. A portion of the now wet air is forced out of the kiln and is replaced by drier outside air. So in the kilns, you know, the wood needs to dry in a uniform way, in every direction. So the fans that are blowing the air around inside the kilns get changed every four hours. So it's so important to control the moisture content. Inside the kiln, the temperature comes up, the humidity goes down, and there's a little guy goes in there with a moisture meter and he checks it to make sure it's on schedule. We dry the wood very slowly to extract the moisture evenly from the wood. And the whole idea is to just get the, the level of moisture in the wood down to that optimum level. I believe sticks are in there somewhere between 10 and 12 days. The beginning of the kiln cycle gets rid of the free water. This actually reduces the moisture content by about 25%. The bound water found within the cell walls begins to extract under the fiber saturation point and the wood begins to shrink. It's where you get to the bound water, you know, the water inside the cells and uh, the, the stick actually begins to shrink. Uh, then you lose somewhere about 10% of the, the size of the stick. When the four by four by four foot pallets enter the kiln, they are tightly bound. Uh, upon exiting the kiln, uh, the bands are loose uh, due to the several inches of height lost during the kiln process. So as far as the moisture and maintaining the moisture goes, there's actually a guy whose job it is to check the moisture. The kiln operator uses the moisture meter to measure the moisture content of samples taken from various places within the kiln. Depending on the results, the operator adjusts his kiln schedule to make sure that the wood is dried perfectly. And he does this by putting a gauge into one of the sticks, one of the planks, while it's still in the kiln and he checks that. Moisture meters work by measuring the electrical resistance between two metal prongs that are driven into a piece of wood. The lower the moisture content, the higher the resistance. To give precise measurements, the meter is programmed with the moisture to resistance curve for a specific species of wood and for the wood temperature. The kiln operator will also take squares from the kiln to test their stress level. He'll cut them lengthwise with a bandsaw to produce a cluster of thin squares. If it warps out or if it does anything tweaky, then they know that that batch of wood needs to stay in the kiln for a while. The optimal amount of moisture that you would want in a hickory stick would be between six and eight percent. A level of six to eight percent is consistent with average indoor conditions, thereby minimizing any chance for dimensional change in the wood due to loss or gain of moisture. Six to eight percent is the same percentage used for fine furniture. This is the reason why on a hot, humid day, fine furniture drawers don't stick, whereas cheaply made furniture drawers will stick. And this is the reason why Vic Firth's kiln drying process uh, is using the same moisture content percentage. It should be noted that all drumsticks, regardless of their moisture content at the time they're manufactured, will adjust to match the relative humidity of the environment in which they're used. The stick moisture content will adapt to the environment that it's in. Average indoor moisture content is around six to eight percent. Other drumstick manufacturers release sticks that are 12 percent. Now of course they need to adjust to the six to eight percent and that's the time when they could warp. But Vic Firth sticks are released at six to eight percent moisture content. If another manufacturer makes a stick from wood using a higher moisture content, 
the stick will dry out fairly quickly until it matches its environment. In the process, the wood will shrink and the stick will go out of round and bow. Other companies, uh, they use like 10 to 12% uh, moisture contact. Some people say that the moisture content in a drumstick should match the same as other striking tools, such as an axe. I don't know about you, but I don't use the axe to play the drums. I keep that outside in the shed. They do this because it's much easier to machine the wood with that higher level of moisture, especially using conventional back knife lathes. When it dries out, the problem that you have is that it warps. Now with Vic Fur Sticks, uh, we only use six to se uh, like six to eight percent of uh, moisture context, and we also use grinders, so it's less warpage. With grinders like Vic Firth uses, you can operate at the lower moisture content, getting good yield at higher quality without any warped or banana sticks. And that's you know the type of quality that I look to because uh, inconsistent sticks can affect the the dynamic and, and, and the sound of, of my drumming. One last but very important point on our kilns. Our kilns are entirely fueled by the waste from other parts of our factory. Sawdust from the machinery. Wood whose quality is not suitable for drumsticks. All of it is burned to fuel the kilns. We proudly are an environmentally friendly, no waste company. In fact, we are dependent on our waste to not only provide steam for the kiln, but to heat the plant. The thing that impressed me the most though, and I gotta say from an ecological standpoint, was the reusage of all the different elements. So there's, there's very little waste, and that made me extremely happy and it also has actually given me more uh, excitement about the product. I think as a percussionist, when you endorse Vic Firth, it's a privilege really. They uh, eliminate wood that's not, that they can tell is not gonna be good for what they need. Um, and that wood that they eliminate is used to heat the plant. And uh, so there's no, uh, there's no waste, they, they use everything. Wood that doesn't make the cut uh, to be a drumstick uh, is used uh, to enable the manufacturing process of, of heating the oven to dry the other pieces of wood. If the factory can't use it, then Vic Firth puts it on a big truck and sends it to another plant and, and they, they turn the sawdust into wood pellets for home heating as opposed to just dumping it all down the drain and making it some other city's problem. So it's really uh, commendable. We're talking, for those of you guys that are super greenies, that's as super as you can get, you know, no waste. And it makes perfect sense, especially you gotta have something to heat the kiln and uh, something, you know, to heat the, uh, the factory, especially during the winter. So, bingo, there it is. You gotta love it. You just do it because uh, it proves that a good ecology is good business. Sustainability is really is in everyone's interest. It makes it that much more exciting and uh, proud to be involved with the company.